listening to the My Pet Podcast, the show for pet lovers of Australia and around the world. Welcome to My Pet Podcast. I'm Aria and I'm joined by vet and pet resident vet, Dr. Glenn. Hello. So, fleas, the biting, jumping critters that make some pet owners' skin crawl. We're going to talk about how to prevent your dog from becoming a flea circus. We'll break down the overwhelming choice of products that are out there. Why do you need flea control? How do you use it? What do you use? Um, And more. (laughs) Uh, So, but before we get started, just remember that this is general advice that may or may not be suitable for you and your pet. And if you do have any questions or concerns about your pet to contact your own veterinarian. Sounds good. So let's get this ball rolling. Why do we need to use flea control, Glenn? A, who wants their pets to have fleas? It's not a very nice, yeah, it's not a very nice thought that your pet's got fleas and it's, I mean, it's no good for the health in several different ways, basically. I mean, I've certainly seen pets that have had enough fleas that they need blood transfusions and, wow. and, and they're dying and that's really bad. And you put them in the old hydro bath and give them a, a rinse off in a flea rinse because you're just trying to kill everything as soon as possible yeah. and, and the water just goes red um, yeah. because um, flea poop is just dried digested blood basically so yeah, yeah well, there's the the red flea dirt poop gross. party yeah it's pretty gross <laughs> super gross um so yeah i mean you don't want to have fleas because they're uncomfortable and, and i mean they're a major cause of itching and scratching um that's for sure but there's parasites that the pets can get from fleas um like bloodborne parasites so that's no good um there's the flea tapeworm so yeah. dogs chewing the flea and takes in the egg of the flea tapeworm and then your dog's got tapeworm so that's no good either no um, and um i mean as a trigger for other skin allergies flea allergy dermatitis and all that sort of thing that's not very nice either so, yeah, yeah definitely lots of good reasons and if your dog's sleeping on the bed with you i've had lots of pets that come in that the dog's crawling with fleas and you have casual conversation with the owner and, and the dog sleeps on the bed with them and and the bed's got to be full of fleas and that's oh no. uh, okay yep and and people haven't noticed or they're ignoring it or i don't know yeah it's not very pleasant though. so <laughs> obviously we want to start using flea products before we have a bed full of fleas absolutely yes that would so be preferable when do we start using flea products look my i mean main recommendation is start them as soon as you get a hold of the pet basically so whether yeah. that's from puppies or if you're getting another um an adult dog i mean the thing is with fleas they're easily controllable with the medications that we've got these days um and they're very easy to kill and prevent by using that but if you have already got an established breeding population at home it can take a little while to to um to cut into that breeding population because they're yeah they're prolific little breeders basically um yeah. and there's you know, nine fleas in the environment for everyone on the pet um or whatever the ratio is okay um, so there's lots of yeah there's once a breeding population is established, it takes – it's difficult to cut into it, basically. So you don't want it to get established in the first place. So we don't want to wait until we see fleas. Preferably not. So we just start with that prevention yeah. and then hopefully we won't ever have to worry about it. Correct. That's um, beautiful. And the thing is with fleas, because they're – I mean, they've got to come from somewhere. People talk about ground fleas. Fleas don't spontaneously erupt from the ground without Wait, without what? coming in contact with, with the pet <laughs> at any stage. There's not like flea volcanoes no, in your no, backyard? No, there's no flea volcanoes. I mean, you can have lots of fleas emerging from the ground because they don't breed on the dog. They breed, you know, on, on the bedding and under the soil, mm-hmm. underneath where the dog sleeps in the corner by the shed where it's nice yeah. and cool and all that sort of thing. But um, you have to get the fleas from somewhere. But yes. dogs being pretty mobile, I mean, they um, you know, go socialising at the dog park or go to friends' places or go to you know family places or if the dog next door or the cat next door has got fleas and your dog's on prevention, well, that flea dies and it's not a problem. If your dog isn't on prevention, well, then you've got a thousand fleas in a month's time and, and then you've got a problem to, to try and get back on top of it. Wow, yeah. a thousand fleas in a month. Or uh, many more. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Now, there is so many different types of products, yep. especially in the last 10 years. There's been a lot of new developments, Absolutely. a lot of new products um, have hit the market. So there are a lot of options, so it can be really confusing. Where do people start? <laughs> it can be really confusing. And I mean, uh, if you've got your puppy and you're um, going to your vet for your 
first or second vaccination. I mean, it's a good place to start. What um, is does your vet find it's good in your local area? I mean, it's a start, but I mean, you want something that's working um, over an extended period. And there's different, um, I mean, different options of, of application essentially. So I yeah. mean, look, the old flea baths and flea shampoos. I mean, look, they work for what they're designed to do. But um, if you're using a shampoo and you're washing your shampoo off your dog. It, it's only going to kill the fleas that are on it. And then so the, the shampoo, if, like a flea shampoo, is only going to kill the fleas that are on the dog. Correct. But the other fleas that are coming from outside or That's that right. have the larvae, it's not going to kill those. Not, not going to kill them. So, I mean, if you've got a puppy that you bring home and it's got fleas on it, absolutely use a flea shampoo to kill the fleas that yeah, are okay. on it. I mean, that's fine. But if you've already got an established flea population, bathing to kill fleas makes no sense at all because they're just going to jump straight back on. So um, we use a flea shampoo in conjunction with other products? If you wish to, yes. Yeah, okay. Yep. Yep. Okay. Yep. And so there's some products that are spot on. There are some products that you can give to them like a chewable. Yep. There's the uh, there's some collars as well. Yep, some couple of very effective collars now. Yep. So, how do people know which option is right for them? To some extent, it depends on. I mean, if you're a multi dog household, what are your other pets already on? Because it's always easiest to just um, have everyone on the same schedule. So, I mean, that's something to take into um, account when you're thinking. Okay, if it's if it's the third dog on the scene, um, having them all on the same products make sense uh, whether that's on a body weight basis or um, just for ease of management basically uh, I mean and it depends on the person as in how's your memory like do you want to be administering something every two weeks or month yeah. I mean, there's lots of monthly chews and monthly top spots um, there's the three month tablet Brevecto now is very effective um, there's a six month top spot if you have got a dog that's you know difficult to administer medications yeah. to or you just set an alarm on your phone every six months and it's done yes um, and and you've also got to consider, okay, there's lots of options out there. There's lots of different combinations within medications that do, you know, there's some that do just fleas, there's some that do fleas and ticks, there's some that do fleas, ticks, heartworm, intestinal worms, which is really handy for um, a, you know, in tick areas. You've, yes. you've got to take that into account. But if you want to give one medication once a month and everything's done, well, well you can do that now with a couple of different products. So that, that makes it simple as well. Yeah, that's yeah. fantastic. What if you don't live in a tick area? If you don't live in a tick area, there's products that do fleas and ticks that are still very effective flea control. Um, and just because the medication does ticks and you're not in a tick area doesn't mean that you shouldn't use that product um, okay because yeah some of the newer medications um like brevecto like mexgard um are very effective tick controls but they're also the most effective flea control equal to the most effective flea control that we've got okay um and it's it's really bring it back to the pet i mean to some extent what does the pet do yeah um, as far as you know frequency of swimming and, and bathing and that sort of thing um, yeah if you've got a specific skin condition that you're needing to um, do um, bathing twice a week well that means that you will um, probably try and avoid top spots basically okay yeah, yeah. so then go for a chewable rather than che chewable spot make, on. makes sense unless yeah. it's a long acting top spot like Brevecta that lasts for six months, um, yes. in which case, okay, you, you're only applying it once and it's absorbed in the system um, and you don't have to worry about it washing off down the track. Yeah, but okay. You're not going to probably bath it on that day and probably the next day. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So um, the different different types of applications um, doesn't really change the, the way that the product works or the effectiveness at all? Um. I mean, each product's got its own yeah, method of application because there's a couple of the top spots, like the um, older generation top spots, like Advantage and Frontline, well, they're not a systemic medication, so it's a topical medication and it only stays on the outside. Okay. Um, and that's, um, I mean, it has its good points and its bad points, like yep. the old um, Advantage, it, some of it actually falls off the pet and controls some of the larval fleas in the environment so oh, wow. you're getting flea control on the pet but then you're also getting um, flea control for the environment as well it's not as stable as some of the other medications that are going uh, into the system um, and staying there for for longer so yeah yeah each medication there's there's some pros and cons do you need do pet owners need to stay with the one type of medication or should they be rotating what they use look it's a hard one that some of the, in general, the older medications, there are some um, resistance issues established. Okay. Um, and 
resistance is always a little bit of a um, touchy subject because there's there's no one out there, there's no government body out there, um, you know, testing fleas for resistance or susceptibility to insecticides. So um, it's usually drug companies that make the <laughs> make the medication yeah. that are maybe introducing a new medication that are doing testing to try and find out, okay, do um, – is our medication more effective because there's resistance in some of the older ones? And certainly like some of the really old school propoxifen and, and other medications that have been around for 20 or 30 years, okay, th- there's you know, established resistance to those. But really, um, in my opinion, you just use um, the most effective flea control that you're happy with yeah, um, and, and don't really need to rotate off it um, okay. because you – a lot of the time you're just rotating to the same family group of chemicals realistically. Yeah. Um, and they are all, you know, they're all insecticides, they're all chemicals. Um, but the if you're rotating from one thing to another, you've, you know, you've got to have an informed way of doing that. Otherwise yes. you're probably just changing to the same stuff. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Um, so I guess if you if somebody's been giving a product for quite a long time and they're noticing that it's not working, maybe that's why they've come to this podcast, yep. then maybe try something newer or talk to your vet about trying something with a different active ingredient? Look, talk to the vet or, I mean, most of the um, the products have got help and help lines, like the 1-800 number um, that can go through and they've got informed people there that can um, get um, more information about the, the problem because, I mean, most of the problems that we see are based on um, – application problems or oh. it's not being used um, appropriately in that situation or, I mean, the odd dog takes an oral medication and then throws it up tw- 20 minutes later and, and you don't know what's going on. Yes. Um, so, I mean, most of the flea breakdowns that we see are, are more so because there's um, something else other than a, like a chemical problem going on. Okay. But um, that's not always the case. So, yeah, I mean, either um, – contact the company and go through their step-by-step way of, okay, what's going on here? Why is this not working? Yeah. Um, um, or, yeah, give us a call and see if we can work through it or um, or your vet, basically. Yeah, wonderful. Yeah. So what do pet owners need to consider before they give their dog some sort of treatment like this? Is there any any background work they need to do? Probably not really background work. I mean, it, it's to some extent it's what is the, um, you know, have you already got fleas? established in the household so do you need a multi-pronged approach to try and get on top of it as soon as possible yeah um, obviously prevention is better than cure so if you're starting with no flea problems well it's it's integrating okay what you know what coverage do i need is it just fleas is it fleas and ticks or is it one of those combination medications that needs you know fleas ticks heartworm intestinal worms um so there's probably deciding what you actually need to to, to treat for yeah um, and then okay once you've decided that okay what mode of of um, application do you want to use do you want to use a top spot or do you want to use um a tablet form because some of the medications have got options of top spots or um oral medication in yeah. there um occasionally you've got to think about you know um uh, if your dog's got food allergies what's in the medication yes. as far as meats and that sort of thing but most products that are orally based now haven't got stuff in that's going to cause like food allergy troubles anyway so that's yeah. sort of the, you, you change from what it used to be yeah. Yeah. yeah and on that note tips for actually giving them especially oral medications yeah. some dogs are really fussy and they don't like the the chewables yeah they're, they're all tasty treats um and that doesn't mean that every animal's going to accept them as a tasty treat so um i mean it depends on your pet to some extent you can i mean all of them um, are okay to be given with food okay Um, so if you've got um a a favorite food that they uh, would like to eat i mean there's nothing wrong with hiding in that um i mean as far as most of the oral ones are they're chewable so they're not like a tiny tablet that you can hide in stuff so um, whether it's you know break it up or crumble it up and mix it with a smaller amount of food yes um so if you're doing it at meal time i wouldn't recommend mixing it in with the whole meal because it's more likely that if there's something in there that a very suspicious dog tastes they're more likely to sort of you know eat half and leave half potentially and then okay is the bit that's left got some of the medication in it um so if you're going to do the hiding technique um and breaking it up you'd mix it with a small amount of food wait till they've eaten that and then they can have the rest of their food Um, yeah okay they're just more likely to eat it Uh, i mean some pets um have got their favorite bit of cheese or or camembert or or (laughs) sausage or something and i mean i've got no troubles with that um to any dogs listening at home 
home. <laughs> Ask for camembert with your yep. next flea treatment. What, what, whatever floats your boat. <laughs> um, but yeah, if it's you know if if that's what you need to do, um, once a month or once every three months, well, yeah, I'm, I'm happy with that. Yeah, 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 wonderful. Um, and I guess people, you know, these are a, a chemical. At the end of the day, and some people have safety concerns about yeah. them. How safe are these products? Look, I mean, across the board, I mean, they're all very safe medications or they don't get registration. That doesn't mean that there's not individuals um, within the population that um, doesn't have adverse effect. There's, um, forever there's been people that are worried about um, chemical controls of anything in their pets and realistically yeah. um, there's a... Uh, uh, pros and cons with with everything i mean the pros of good flea control um for the comfort of your pet and for the health of your pet um outweighs in my opinion you know, nearly all the very small likelihoods of potential side effects yes um, i mean some of the um, classes of medication within the flea control there's you know there's known restrictions um as far as you know there's some pets that shouldn't get this class of um, of insecticide yep. um, because of you know, potential interactions. Certainly, um, some of the newer um, medications that have got um, uh, contraindications on the box that says don't give to um, epileptic patients, basically. Yes. So, if your dog's already got epilepsy, um, there's a whole class of medications that um, slightly lower the seizure threshold potentially. Okay. Um, so, that's uh, a recommendation of okay, if your dog's already epileptic, don't start them off on that medication. Yeah. Um, and there's, you know, there's probably a few patients out there that, you know, have, because epilepsy's a, a moving target sometimes, like canine adult onset epilepsy doesn't happen between until they're three or six years of age. Yeah, okay. If your pet has one of these medications, they've been having it for, you know, two years, um, and then all of a sudden they have a seizure, or well, was it the medication or? Or whether you're going to have a seizure anyway. Yes. Um, if you give the medication to your pet for the first time, and that would be fine to do, and they've never had a seizure before, and they have a seizure a couple of days after giving it, well, okay, was it the medication that slightly made that more likely to happen, or was yeah. it, you know, if you've got ten million dogs get a medication, there's going to be some that have seizures in that sort of time frame. So yeah. Again, pros and cons. Um, I mean, for me, um. In my clinical practice, and I'm a full-time spinal vet, um, I've never seen any significant adverse events um, from any insecticide applications that were done properly, basically. But you um, have had to give blood transfusions for really severe flea infestations. Correct, yeah, and, and yeah, flea tapeworms. And, I mean, I, I touch wood, I don't see near as much flea allergy dermatitis as I used to. Like, you know, mm -hmm. you used to see lots of dogs running around with no hair on their backside and, and they're chewing their tail to pieces because... That's where flea allergy dermatitis comes up. Um, I don't see near as many dogs as that because we've got a lot better flea control. Yeah. Um, so it, you know it's made a big difference for that. But um, yes, there is. You know, there is the odd patient that has an adverse um, reaction. That's very low. Um, if you suspect that there's something going on, again, talk to your vet or um, call the company um, that you have um, bought the, the medication off, basically. Yeah. Um, but it's, yeah, nothing, if something's got a positive action, positive effect, there's a potential negative effect. Yeah. Um, but it's very unlikely. Wonderful. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's good. That's really good to know. I'm sure that's comforting for yeah. people. Everybody just wants their, their fur babies to be safe. Yeah, I mean, my, my, my own pets are on flea control all the time. Yeah, me too. Yeah. Me too, because mine's in. He sleeps in my bed. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and it, and it makes sense. We also on uh, the vet and pet website on our help, help center, we've got some great blogs which go through flea control products, what to use, how to use it. Yep. Um, you can see the range of the flea control products that we sell on at vetandpetdirect.com.au. You can jump onto the live chat there and talk to one of our vet nurses, and you can email us. You can call us. Um, and if you have any questions about how your pet should be um, having flea control, then speak to your vet about it. Yeah, absolutely. Wonderful. Well, thanks for listening, everybody. Um, and Dr. Glenn, was there anything else that you wanted to cover before we wrap this up? No, I think we've sort of covered pretty much everything. It's, um, yeah, I mean, bottom line is I recommend flea control. Um, it's far easier to prevent it than it is to treat it. Um, if you're going to have to treat it, I mean, it's yeah, a multi-factor approach is, is often the way to go, which we sort of didn't really cover. Um, but if you've got lots of fleas already established, um, I mean, the medications topically and orally that we give kill fleas very effectively. But if you've already got 
pots of fleas in the carpet and the bed and that sort of thing. I mean, a lot of the time you need to go in with um, flea bombs or you know other control measures to get on top of things faster. Uh, yeah, because it, you, you, know, you don't want them hanging around. Um, yes, the medications are very effective at killing. Every flea that comes in contact with the pet, you know, within minutes to an hour or two, a lot of them. Um, but you don't want fleas hatching out for the next, you know, two to three months in your house um, that are still bouncing around, jumping onto everything that moves. Okay, yeah. so we need to, if you have a flea infestation problem, you need to control them in the environment as well as on your pet. You just get on top of things for your pet's comfort and your comfort a lot faster. Okay. Yeah, yeah you'll still get there by just medicating every dog and cat in the household that can breed fleas, but you don't want that to be a prolonged agonizing yeah it just hits the fast forward button on <laughs> yeah, on yeah. getting back to life without a flea circus Correct. hanging around yeah but yeah that, that's a bit it. wonderful well thanks for listening and and good luck with your dogs and um, we hope that you don't have any flea volcanoes Staying in your backyard flea free <laughs> thanks thank bye. you see ya.